to part 12 of our beginner series into game development in Unreal Engine. Today we will be talking about possession, the concept of taking control of a pawn. Uh, one of the best ways probably to make use of the word properly as it is uh, made named in Unreal Engine possession is to think of yourself sort of as a ghost, right? Um, what you do is any pawn or character or any class that is derived from the class pawn is something that you are able to take control over through possession. And it is really just very simple. Uh, what you need is a controller, it can be a player controller or an AI controller, and that controller chooses to send the message possess to the pawn that it wants to take control over. That is all that is required and after that you have control over the pawn. Now when it comes to a player that's usually something very controlled because you don't want a player to jump around taking possession over pawns willy-nilly so usually this is something that you have logic for like for example uh, Grand Theft Auto. In Grand Theft Auto you run around with a character uh, shooting other people and then at some point you decide you jump into a car. In unreal terms that would mean that you have possession over the character until it runs up to the car and opens the door and jumps in. Then you take possession over the car instead and your inputs from your controller will now affect the car rather than the character inside of the car. Um, the, the thing to keep in mind is uh, it, it might seem like a difficult concept but it's really really straightforward the, it is similar to things we have done before all you need to be able to take possession of a character or a pawn is just the ability to have a reference to it so once you have the reference to a pawn, you can have in logic saying this controller A should take possession of this pawn B. And then when you have done that connection, the controller will control that pawn. Now, that might work better or worse in different circumstances depending on some things. Because if you just put a controller to take possession of a pawn, but the pawn doesn't actually react to any inputs then you're basically a ghost that has taken possession over someone that's not doesn't have the ability to move around uh, today we will be demonstrating a little bit of this uh, in very simple manners and hopefully the, the message and the concept will become very clear to you so now we're inside unreal engine and we're using version 4.26 if you want to follow along today this is what our first person character looks like. If we were to make a few of these, uh, that would probably be the best way of showing you how this is done. So we can go and edit this uh, class, the first person character, and we can press, press the magnifying glass up here to browse to where it is. We can choose to make a child blueprint class and we drag this one in where we want to play around with it today, which is for me the tutorial 12 folder. So now I have this map here and this child of this uh, character. Now, what we want to do is a couple of things. First of all, we want to make a few of these. So let's... Uh, these are all children, but we can choose to name them something like child A, child B, and child C. So we have three different ones. And the reason for this is we want to be able to have all of these out in the world at the same time and still be able to differentiate them uh, among each other so we see which one, that they're not all the same, basically. Uh, let's see, if we go into our character child A here and let's see if we can do something. 
first we want to make sure that we have uh, now we're in this uh, let's talk about this for a little bit what we have is a player start over here which will spawn in the default pawn class like we spoke about earlier in the tutorial series however that's not necessarily the only way to get a character into the game you can also do something like this where you bring in a character or a pawn and have it be auto possessed you can see here you can put auto possessed by AI or auto possessed by player and then we can also choose which player to use here so if I press play now here I'm gonna be auto possessing this character that I put in here um, so that's another way to be able to take position of, of characters uh, the, the player start is not the only way and also we will be doing it by code in a little bit which you will see uh, let's rotate these a little bit so we have them watching each other a little this one like so okay so now we have three different pawns here they should be child a b and c let's make them uniquely visually different among each other first off let's rename this one since i made a little bit of a typo there so we have child c now there's nothing visually representative among these that distinguish them so we need to go get the the parent class and we need to put in something here like something super simple we go to the viewport here so you can see what we're gonna do um, so we put in let's put in a static mesh it's always very simple and then we can make it a cube because that's also very simple like so and then we can make it so that the cube does not have any collisions we don't have any issues so we go to collision presets and go no collision. Then we can say that this mesh here is supposed to be red. That's not good. Let's try maybe blue, no, yellow. Do we have any nice materials here? Let's pick M door. Okay, this is super not useful, but we'll do it anyway. So the parent class will look like this door material for the cube and then we can go to our children now so we go to child a and then we find the static mesh we should probably name it something also so let's go back to the first person character quickly and rename it to distinguishing visual and compile then we go back to our character a. and then we change the the material you can choose something completely different from materials here it doesn't matter at all just something so they're different among each other right so we'll pick a burnished steel for character a character c is gonna get something else character c is gonna get gold because everybody knows that gold makes you 50 percent more character than any other character and we are missing character B here so let's find character B and let's change its visual as well and we'll make it something really different from the others how about grass okay so now you can see the three different characters are out here and they they look very very different among each other right and uh, there's multiple reasons why we did this first of all so we can see the differences between them but also because you see that by the default you don't actually see the uh, the guns like we have we have removed some things so we don't see the guns anymore so this is how we can see that we're actually encountering a different player so now we're going to go over to the actual possession part of this one way that we could do this is by having a line trace go out on some kind of key just to like represent an event that would uh, be interesting for uh, finding a reference because what we need to do is find a reference to one of these players right so we can do it by <coughs> by checking uh, with a line trace forward so let's find our uh, parent uh, first person character 
and see if we do not have already some kind of line trace. Uh, we have some line traces here. Okay, so nothing currently active it looks like, but that is fine. Uh, we'll just make a new key because we keep it separate. So let's check the G key. G is going to be used in a lot of places, of course, but you can find it here on the keyboard events, G. Uh, and let's just steal our line trace from our capsule component, forward vector, everything like this. So, in case you hadn't followed with the earlier tutorials, uh, all you need to do here is um, you get the the world location for the capsule component in this case, which is our uh, main detection of uh, our character running into things. And we just say that that's going to be our start position. And when we press the G, this line trace is going to go off. And it's going to go from the start position, which is the capsule component, and then it's going to take its forward vector with a distance traveled forward, a trace distance, which is currently set to 3 meters or 300 unreal units. And it's just going to multiply those values and add it to the start location to get a end location and then the trace is going on between these two. So this should theoretically allow us to uh, trace the different characters. So if we take an outed character and we cast this to a first person character, like so, and that is successful, then we have successfully traced another character. And if we have traced to a different character we want to we want our controller and we want to possess so you might have seen there there's um, two related events for this so there's the possess and the unpossess and they're just like they sound the possess is to take control over something and unpossess is to uh, leave control and uh, leave the pawn so we'll just say like that. We want this controller wants to possess, and then we have to put in which kind of pawn it wants to possess. And this should be all that we need. So if we run around, let's see which key did I? G is the key, right? So we go here and we press G, and nothing is happening. Let's troubleshoot and see what's going on. So we go into our first person character. Make sure that we go into the proper one, this one, and we'll just type a, out a print here saying um, possess uh, should have fired. Just get a basic understanding of what's going on here if, if something is happening. So we press G, nothing's going on. Uh, let's check and see if it is our line trace that's not going properly could be and uh, let's leave it for persistent so it stays around for a bit and let's go press G and we can see it's going out so it's just barely going above the box that is super unfortunate but an easy fix of course so if we go to our first person character the viewport find the the box. Well, the box isn't good, of course, because it's not taking any collisions, but we could change this so that it has... Uh, let's change to custom and change collision enabled to query only. So that... Let's see, we had a trace line by visibility channel. Okay, so we want to block the visibility. So let's give this a try then. And we raise the box a little bit so the line trace hits it. And let's try again. Okay, that happened a little bit quickly, but um, we now shoot out the line trace and if we hit the box we take control over the other character here. So you can see that there's no need for us to unpossess in this particular instance because we uh, 
we we buy since we can only possess one pawn at one time by the time we take possession over one pawn the other pawn is forced to be unpossessed but anyway this this allows us now to transition between these different first person characters uh, seamlessly without any issues right so let's try something different then we have our three characters here now but what happens if we put in a pawn well let's create a pawn yeah, so we take the parent class as pawn and then we say bp underscore pawn test and just so this this so that this has representation representation and something for us to query against as well uh, what we will do is we'll add a static mesh and we will say this is our visual representation like so and we'll choose our cube and we'll bring it up a bit and we'll make it how about brick wall and in addition to that we do what we did with the other one which is we make a a custom uh, with collision for query only make sure that its visibility is blocking because visibility is the trace channel we're going for and then we bring this pawn out into the world here as well like so okay so the first thing is that's going to happen here is when we press G it's going to hit and nothing's going to happen and the reason for that is that this is a pawn and these are first person characters and we had in our code in the first person character event a cast to first person character so this doesn't work very well for us in this instance but if we disconnect this or remove it entirely and then cast to pawn like so. Um, a pawn is apparent to all characters, so all characters are gonna succeed in casting to pawn. And also this pawn that we just brought in in the world is also uh, a child to pawn, so it will also be cast to this. So since the actual ability to possess is on a pawn, this works just fine to put in a possess like so. So let's try it out. So if we go here now and try to possess this character, it's going to go fine. And we can possess this character and it's going to go fine. But now when we possess this character, you might not notice this, but I'm moving and clicking around and stuff like that. The thing that is happening now is what we spoke about earlier, which is that we have taken possession over this pawn, but this pawn doesn't have any way to react to input. If we go to... it, it doesn't get anything by default. If we check the, the event graph it's completely empty and we can't go check the pawn class here because it's a, it's a C++ class but uh, normally when you have a first person character, at least those that you get from templates, then you have this code that you're probably used to seeing by now which is, uh, you see this part here about movement input. It's taking some kind of input and it's reacting to it in some sort of way and they can also be mouse inputs like this is the input that allows you to pan around and turn with the camera and that is actually the only inputs that we're interested in there's also this which is related to analog sticks and such things but that doesn't affect us currently so yeah so the, the situation we end up in is that we're in a pawn it doesn't have any way of of uh, reacting to the controls so if you wanted to have this pawn actually be able to uh, walk around as well then it will have to get some basic inputs uh, coded in here as well it's not super difficult of course you could easily just follow what uh, first person character uh, does basically and it would work fine but for the purpose of understanding how possession works and how easy it is to actually get it working. I hope this is suitable. Since you see from from this example, all you need is actually just 
getting a handle to a specific pawn somehow and then possessing it with your controller or a specific player controller or a specific AI controller for that matter. And we have in previous tutorials gone through a lot of different ways how you can get references to other uh, objects in the world. So getting to specific pawns shouldn't be an issue. You, you see here the, the volumes that we've used earlier, the line traces that we have used. We have used the get actors by classes in the begin place of different characters and uh, objects. We have um, we've had uh, uh, event dispatchers throw it away. We have had uh, interfaces to, to use. There's a whole bunch of different ways that you can get those references. And then from that, you can decide if you want to hook onto that some kind of logic for possession. Anyway, I, I hope this is understandable. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Uh, leave any suggestions or comments down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. In the next video, we will be looking a little bit into data tables. And yeah, I think just data tables to begin with. But uh, that's all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.